you were to go to Europa, you would see basically this frozen world that has a, a really thick ice shell. It would look a lot like one of these really chaotic regions on top of glaciers here on Earth with basically big blocks of ice and um, fractured materials. It's one of the few places that tends to mimic Earth in the sense that you might see rifting, um, so ice separating. There's a possibility you might see cryovolcanism, which is eruptions of ice and water from the surface of Europa. Beneath that, there's a 100 kilometer thick liquid water ocean. It's a really huge body of liquid water that could potentially be a habitat for future detections of life. What lies in there is really anyone's guess. There could be hydrothermal systems, which are like the black smokers that happen at the mid-ocean ridges. And if you were going to find life, that's where you would probably find it. The thing that sort of sticks out in the imagination is that not just the surface of Europe, all this ice around you, but this giant looming gas giant in the backdrop of Jupiter sitting there with its incredible bands of red clouds and white clouds. The more I found out about Europa, the more I kind of fell in love with it. Um, it's just a very unique and interesting place. Earth is definitely a water planet and Europa is truly a water planet. If you compare the amount of water that's in that ocean to the amount of water that's on Earth, it's about three times the amount of water. Finding analogs for Europa on Earth is a challenging um, exercise. Earth is relatively warm compared to Europa. Finding places on Earth where you can go and find permanent ice that's relatively thick, there's only pretty much two places you can do that. Uh, there's Greenland and then there's also Antarctica. Um, in terms of the logistics, Antarctica is far more challenging. You, you have to travel basically to the other side of the planet, and Greenland in particular. There's lots of melt features that give us the uh, opportunity to study places where you have ice overlying or in contact with liquid water, which is the kind of environment that we're looking for when we're trying to do analogs for Europa. Seismology is a discipline where we study earthquakes, but we also take those tools of seismology and use them to study the interiors of other planets. So not just earthquakes on Earth, but also moonquakes, Mars quakes, Venus quakes, whatever you like. A lot of my research in the past few years has been in Greenland. There's a NASA-funded project to go and use this subglacial lake um, as an analog for Europa, about 80 kilometers north of Thule Air Force Base. We've done a bunch of geophysics. Um, we studied with seismometers how thick the ice was. We looked at the thickness of the, the underlying lake. So you're gonna have regions where the ice is physically moving. Um, and that's what we really wanna look at is, can we see these motions within the ice and can we see the interaction of ice and water? Because that will be very important for when we actually get to Europa and put instruments down. Greenland is a very challenging place to go do science. Depending upon where you go in Greenland, uh, the average daily temperature can be between zero to minus 10 to minus 20 degrees C, which is enough to cause some serious problems if you're not properly prepared. Mentally, it's challenging too, because you go into the field anticipating what you think will happen, and then it's a bit of a different scenario. I was part of the team that um, went in to take out our instruments. We were anticipating that we might get some melt. Instead, we got a meter of snowfall. You have to bring all your tents and equipment that protect you from that environment. There's really no place you can go and easily pick up something you forgot. The landscape flying up there in a helicopter was amazing. To see the glaciers going out into bays and the amazing rock formations. It's, as a geologist, it's fun to nerd out and get to see all of that. It was a great experience for all of us. Right now, we're focused on Europa because it's an obvious target. We have evidence, though, for all kinds of interesting features elsewhere. Um, there's this small moon of Saturn called Enceladus. The Cassini missions discovered the presence of active plumes, where there's literally eruptions of, of water into space from the southern hemisphere. We also see evidence there might be some liquid water oceans beneath the surface of Pluto. So it seems like this ocean world, you know, these icy ocean worlds are fairly commonplace in our solar system. Europa is just the beginning.